Hello, everyone. I'm Stephen Strang, and welcome to this edition of the Strang Report, in which I'm going to talk to a prophetic voice in our day. His name is James Gall. I've known him for a long time, and he is very well respected in prophetic circles. And we're going to talk today about Israel and what's happening in Israel with this war they're having with Hamas. And we're trying to understand. I'm sure many people are trying to understand, but here at Charisma, we're trying to understand what it means biblically and prophetically. So let me start, James, by saying welcome. Thank you for fitting this in. We had a little bit of trouble uh, finding a time that worked, but here we are. And uh, I know that you have a word for us. So let me just ask you, what do you see prophetically about this Israel-Hamas war. Yes, thank you, uh, Stephen, uh, for um, bringing me on to the String Report. I obviously esteem you and um, the charisma, various uh, forms of communication. And so, Father, we bless this time, and we're asking that the Holy Spirit will direct Every thought, every word, and everything that goes forth in Jesus' name. Now, my perception is based around Psalm 83. In verses 4 and 5, it says, There is a conspiracy among the nations to wipe Israel off the face of the earth, that she be remembered no more. Now, when you look at the charter of Hamas, the first two lines of the charter is virtually quoting Psalm 83, verses 4 and 5, because Hamas's goal is that Israel be wiped off the earth and that it be remembered no more. And so I have a background in researching and studying about the birth of Israel, the miracle of Israel, and how God sustains Israel. So I believe that I get asked often about, are we headed into World War III? My well, why, do you, why do you say when you're asked this? Well, I believe that we... This is a little bit different than the previous two world wars. But when you actually understand World War II, it was actually multiple wars, wasn't it? Layered upon one another. That's it right, wasn't because the war in the Pacific was very different than Hitler, even though they were uh, allied uh, against you, us. And... and Yes, and you had music. Go ahead. Uh, with first. Italy, with Russia, you're right. Several wars going on at the same time. And so in a sense, here's where I believe we're headed, and it does involve the Middle East, that we are going into multiple regional wars all at the same time. Obviously, we have the war in the Ukraine. We have now this war in the Middle East, and we will be tipping into a battle over the Pacific waterways. And I believe there could be another um, battle, as it could be regional, over around the war as it sees around the Aleutian Island chains between like Russia and Alaska. And I believe that we are in the midst of the beginning of multiple regional wars all at the same time. But let me reel that in concerning the Middle East. Where are we now? Psalm 83 is really the template. Because when you read the list of the group of the entities, geographical entities, that's listed there, 
of who it is that's going to be brought together. Do you know, Stephen, that Germany is not listed in that group of nations? Do you know that Gog and Magog is not listed in that group of geographical entities? In fact, Cush, which is Egypt, is not mentioned in that geographical group of entities. But do you want to know who is listed? Yes, please. Philistia. Philistia is mentioned over and over and over. And who is modern-day Philistia? Well, it's Palestine. The Gaza Strip. Yeah. It's the Gaza Strip. And the area of southern Lebanon. That area is mentioned in this list in Psalm 83, as well as an area of Jordan, as well as areas of Iraq and Iran. They are all listed here in Psalm 83. And when I have done research on this and talked to scholars, uh, Messianic scholars, they say that this has never been fulfilled before. This is not the War of Independence that happened in 1948, right after Israel became a nation. Do you remember about that, Stephen? Well, of course. All the different uh, nations surrounding them attacked. It's a miracle that Israel won that war because all they had was a little militia, which yeah. is morphed and grown into the IDF. But yes. uh, you're right. It's it's a it's a miracle. Then the Six Day War was different. The Yom Kippur War was very different. And then there's been all kinds of other uh, fighting. We call right. Uh, they use words like infatata. Yes, there's been terror exactly. attacks, but never anything like mm -hmm. happened on October seventh. That's exactly right. And my conviction is that this is not a one. They keep talking about a one front war. And then they talk about it being a two-front war. I don't believe that at all. They keep People keep forgetting history that the capital, I don't even like using the words, the PLO, okay? But the capital is in Ramallah. Remember that geographically, right. that whole entity of, I don't it's, I don't even, I'm not even going to call it a nation, that it was divided into two geographical areas, the Gaza Strip, one area, and then there's Ramallah. Remember that there's another faction. It's called Fatah. There's a whole nother group waiting right there to arise. So I believe that isn't, it's not going to be just a one-front war out of Gaza. There is 150,000 rockets fueled by in, from, in his Hezbollah in southern Lebanon, fueled by Iran. Then you've got Ramallah that no one is talking about at all. That's another supposedly tamer faction than Hamas. And isn't it interesting, Hamas and Haman? And what was the goal, Stephen, of Haman in the book of Esther? Well, it's to eliminate the Jewish people, of course. And then he hung on the same gallows that he was wanting to hang Mordecai, if you know that story at all. And uh, recently, Jonathan Kahn, the uh, author yes. of The Harbinger and also the jo Josiah Manifesto, who talks in that book about the 50-year mystery, which is that it's been exactly 50 years 50 after years. the Yom Kippur War. Yes. But he tells something that you probably already know, but most of us don't, is that Hamas actually means violence. And that That's the word exactly Hamas right. exists in the Bible. And this That's group, right. of course, has taken that word. But all That's these things right. are very interesting. Now, the secular people 
mm-hmm. all over the world. Of course, the whole world is focused on what's happening in Israel right now, mm-hmm. as they are over the years. In fact, right. uh, Jonathan Kahn makes the point, people c- can watch this. In fact, I did a, a Strang report on sure. this, and it's also on YouTube, uh, that... You know, when World War II happened and Israel yes. was created, yes, the whole world was focused on it, but nobody focuses on Germany anymore uh-uh. or Eisenhower or, right. you know, all the things through history, but the world is still focused on Israel. And yes. um, so I think that it's important as believers to understand this yeah. in a way, we're not going to get this in the news media and and even charisma is not news media in the traditional sense. We're trying to understand True. spiritually what's happening, and that's why we reach out to prophetic voices like yes. you. And as I said in the open, we have a lot of respect for you. You have a long you. track record. You help your books and, and your different things that you do to minister, the conferences right. and everything else, help people to understand. But you know what? There's an awful lot of kind of flaky prophetic yeah, words is. out there even some yes, about there is. israel people will sort of right. prophesy things that benefit their ministry or something That's right. you don't do that of course and we want to just strip all that away yes. help help me and help yeah. my viewers yes. understand exactly what's going on you you seem to say that it has to do with this psalm and the wording of the psalm mm-hmm. that helps us to understand yes. a lot of things but where do you think this is going prophetically Yes. Well, when you, okay, one, when you study Psalm 83 and you end up in verse 14, ultimately it talks about that this dark enemy enemy will be crushed, but it talks about a redemptive purpose. And it talks about how the, so that they will be humiliated and that the name of God will be glorified. Now, we believe that there is only one way to God. It's not through Allah, and it is through the Lord Jesus Christ. And we believe that the blinders must also come off of the Jewish people's eyes. So God uses crisis as a tool for people to cry out to him. So one of the true keys is in crisis intervention through intercession is to pray for divine divine visitations for Jew and Gentile alike. So I am actually praying in the midst of this horrific, horrific activity, and it's going to increase. Increase from the north in Lebanon. Increase could increase from Ramallah. It could increase but here I'm, I'm going to I'm going to say that I have been prophesying for 20 years that there would come one of the greatest church movements in Iran, and an underground church would arise in Iran, and that there will be a people's revolution that will arise in Iran. I have been having visions where. There will be a explosion underground of a nuclear plant underground. And so because I keep having this as a repeated vision, I am I have seen an, a geographical area, and I am praying into this, and then it will set that program way back. And then I use a psalm where it says, the shields of the earth belong to the Lord. So we have invented and have helped Israel with something called the Iron Dome. But I believe supernaturally there's something greater than the Iron Dome. It is the shields of the earth belong to God. 
So as you know, Stephen, in the book of Daniel, the archangel Michael is assigned as a warrior angel and a defender of Israel. So just today, in a prayer call that I was leading, we were calling forth for a border patrol guard around the borders, around the waterways of Israel, but around the southern border of the United States. Because it is absolutely, I'm a little intense right now, because it is absolutely necessary in this hour. Weakness creates a vacuum that evil fills. And folks, that is important for you to hear. Weakness creates a vacuum that evil fills. And with so, what weakness, is the solution? Because those of us who yep. are following what's going on can see how very weak the Biden administration is. Yes, where the Secretary mm-hmm. of State goes over there to the Middle East, and the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia mm-hmm. makes him wait yes. for hours and then cancels the meeting. Oh. I mean, that was just rude. I mean, yeah, I mean, oh, and this well. shows weakness. We have an election coming up in a year, and hopefully the American people will see that we need strong leadership. Now, that's a discussion for another day, but what do you see happening between now and then? A lot can happen in a matter of a few days, let alone a whole year. You're right. Um, A lot can happen in a few days. So right now, what can we do? That's why... I'm, I've been, we have been leading in our own ministry every Wednesday at noon, this like dial 911. Now, we have been doing live prayer because, and today it was a border patrol guard calling it forth. And not only for like Michael and his angels, warrior angels that are under him for Israel, but because the United States is more porous, you know this, right now than it has ever been probably in its existence. And I am totally, I'm so sorry, I don't, I am not a negative doom and gloom prophet. I try to find the redemptive purposes of God always behind a situation. But right now, we must be on the alert. We must wake up because, and we must call forth the angels for a border patrol guard because we do not wrestle only say against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities and spirits of wickedness in the heavenly places. But the problem is these demonic forces do take up their presence among evil people. And right now, right now, We are being invaded with, we call them sleeper cells. Right now, we are being invaded by evil people with plots. Just like I mentioned, multiple regional wars all at the same time. We must right now be calling forth for a level of Holy Spirit discernment to locate these enemies that are already getting planted in the United States and detect them and get them shut down before their plots get released in Jesus' name. So let me see. I understand this as we wrap this up. 
uh, and I'm going to give you the last word, but basically you're saying that things are so serious in the natural with a porous border, Mm -hmm. with terrorists getting through, forming sleeper cells, which could become a real problem later, Mm -hmm. that in a spiritual aspect, we have to do something that makes no sense to the senses Yes. And that is to believe that God supernaturally will keep these people from coming in and expose mm-hmm. them once they are in. So, you know, this is hard to prove. You know, there are yes. a lot of skeptical people that probably think True. we're a little nutty, but True. we have to believe that things happen in the spiritual realm that we can't necessarily see, but they happen nonetheless. Am I getting this right? Y- yes. The devil's number one tool is deception and the church's number one need is discernment. Let me tell you a story. In World War II, there was a man called Reese Howells. And in the Swansea Bible College in Wales, it is known, and many people have read the book, Reese Howells, The Intercessor. And there's a couple of other books that were written by a couple of other people about that period of time. Well, I was given actually an assignment from the Lord on what we call redigging the wells to go to the Swansea Bible College some years ago to redig the well of crisis intervention through intercession. Well, I told the Lord, I said, listen, I'm a nobody who knows nobody. And he interrupted me. He says, yes, but I'm the God who knows everyone. And I went, oh, okay. So what happened? And uh, maybe you could make this your last word, and then I'll be back with another comment. I wish we could talk more, and maybe we need to do another another podcast because this is so interesting, and you're helping us to understand it from an entirely different point of view. But tell us what happened there in Wales. Well, I was on a tour of Wales. I was ministering in Mariah Chapel, and I got an invitation that was unplanned to go visit the Swansea Bible College. And so when I was there, I had a a personal time with Samuel Howells, who was 86 years old, who was the only son of Reese Howells. I asked him the question. I said, how did you and your father and all of those people get the authority and the revelation to block Nazi Germany from entrance into the United Kingdom, into England and to Wales? And he ended up, the short story was this. He said, you must understand The Lord's servant was possessed by God. It was amazing, tears streaming down his face. Then he laid his hands upon me, and he prayed the mantle of Reese Howells upon my life. And he commissioned me at 86 years old that I would be used as one to help rally people in a time of crisis in the future. Thus, we are right now. We are in that time. And now I say, let the watchmen on the walls arise, because there comes times when... It is a time for the Esther. It is a time for the Mordecai. It is a time when the watchman must arise for such a time as this. Well, thank you. That's very well said, and we don't have much time. So just quickly tell people how they can connect with your ministry, how they can participate in those um, prayer uh, phone calls or, or Zoom calls or whatever they are, and then I'm... And I'm going to come back with another word, so I want my viewers to stay tuned. But now you have the last word. Yeah, thank you, Stephen. So a lot of this is written in this book, The Mystery of Israel and the Middle East, A Prophetic Gaze into the Future, where I go through and I break down 
praying for all of the descendants of Abraham and the Psalm 83 message. And if you want, you can visit GodEncounters.com or just go to JamesGall.com. And I want to thank you, Stephen, and your entire staff at Charisma. And I just bless this audience and may this word go forth and may a call be heard and answered by thousands of people around the world in Jesus' name. Thank you for staying tuned. I know you find this very interesting. There's a lot that we need to delve into, and perhaps I'll do some other podcasts, but I want to encourage you, as we referred to earlier, to share this with others. But mostly, I wanted to encourage you to help meet the need. Israel's at war. There are a lot of needs. And through our nonprofit partner, which is called Christian Life Missions, we are stepping up to help with the need. We've set a goal to raise $100,000, That's a lot for our small mission. It's a drop in the bucket to the need. But you know what? A lot of that has already come in. And you can donate. It's a tax-deductible donation to christianlifemissions.org. You can also find out more information there. It's very easy to to donate. And 100% of what comes in will go to the need. We're primarily working with three ministries over there, but as we're aware of other th- ministries that are doing a good job, we are donating to them. Our fund is called Stand with Israel. It is helping with humanitarian aid, helping with bomb shelters, and so forth and so on. And we will keep raising money as long as there's a need and as long as there is a, a response from you, our listeners and viewers. So thank you for watching The Strang Report. Share it with others. If you want a good ministry to donate, it's christianlifemissions.org and our Stand With Israel. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you don't subscribe. And uh, we'll see you again on the next podcast. In an upside down world, there is only one way to stay grounded. Life is full of twists and turns, successes and setbacks. How can you reach your God-given potential and achieve your dreams? With over four decades of reporting on the move of the Holy Spirit around the world, Stephen E. Strang has firsthand experience of how the Holy Spirit has led him on a remarkable journey of faith and a successful life. In his new book, Spirit-Led Living in an Upside-Down World, he will invest his true life lessons into the hearts of readers as he reveals his secrets to having a successful life led by the Holy Spirit. Go to booksbystevestrang.com to pre-order your copy today.